Hello, my name is Donnie McNichol of Team Animation and I'd like to speak to you about team effectiveness. In particular, using insights into people's communication and engagement style to improve team collaboration and effectiveness. Teams nowadays in this new business require uh, environment have got lots of challenges. They need to be very people focused, organic, the agile word comes up, technologically advanced, they're often distributed and need to be comfortable in that context. They need, um, they need to minimize bureaucracy, etc., etc. There's various things that teams need to do. So examples here, just some visuals, some team development work we did with an aerospace company as part of an MSC recently at Warwick Manufacturing Group. And uh, just shows you the, the teams they were working on simple exercise around bridge building, but there were some real big issues and big learnings came up from just such a simple team exercise. And these people, of course, are great. They work all across the world, but everyone can learn, everyone can get benefit and improve on their team effectiveness, even with relatively simple exercises. So we're gonna introduce a simple diagnostic and model that may be able to help you improve your team effectiveness. First of all, we need to be conscious of the fact we are all, all unique. I'm going to, what I'm going to describe now is actually described in a separate communication, a video and communication, where we talk through the diagnostic in some detail. But this one, I'm uh, just going to do a broad overview because we're going to get straight into talking about it, applying it in a team context. But first of all, you need to understand that people are unique. You can see that each person listens, makes decisions, builds teams, etc., differently. If you look at the four cross sections of the, the tree, externally they look very different and internally they look very different. The diagnostic I'm describing shortly is not a personality tool. It just gives you an idea about your communication and engagement style. So it's near the outer edge, shows you something an outsider behavioral characteristic. The model itself is called IMA, um, it, it identify, modify, adapt. It's a color-based model. It's very simple, it's uh, easy to use, it takes three minutes, it's 10 questions and it's online. We use it in different ways about understanding yourself, relationship, teams and so on. So this video is talking about teams in particular. You don't necessarily have to go and complete the IMA. We'll give you just enough of a description to allow you to get an insight into this. So the four color styles that we're going to talk around are the high green, blue, red, and yellow. And the highs are all about predominance. So it's not saying trying to pigeonhole into somebody into one thing. It's just saying there's a higher likelihood or preference for you to have that particular color style. So these are the four color styles, um, very much split between non-assertive and assertive and a task orientation versus a relationship orientation. You can have a look at the different colors and have a little read at this screen and maybe even pause the video at this point if you wanted to have a little look at each of the different uh, color styles. So just thinking about the team, you look at this team structure and some of you may recognize your team structure some of you may think, my goodness, I would love to have worked in a project or an organization with a complex team structure like that with all those interplayer relationships. So now we're going to use the IMA model to give some insights about how the team, how typical a team would function. Here is an example of a case study of uh, around decision making by the board of a construction company. So what you have is you've got five people who've got a high red. So they're assertive and very task orientated. That's what the high red is. So they're working very much a bit quick. We want to achieve this by then. Decisions are made quickly. It's made in evidence. Relatively uh, dispassionate com decisions that are made. The high blue, which was the HR manager. So everyone in that diagram was a director apart from the high blue. The high blue was a manager. So it's interesting. High blues tend to be very selfless, very much focused on other individuals, very much about the relationship, not assertive. And it's maybe just an interesting coincidence that they weren't a director, but they were still sitting on the board. 
So what this organization had found, as I say, it was the board of a construction company, they made lots of very good decisions, but sometimes they made relatively rash decisions and they would commit to things very quickly. So using this, it gave them an insight into the fact that possibly we need to make more use of the green and the blue. The green would be more structured, organized, evidence-based, cautious in its decision-making. And the high yellow, there's no one in the team with that, which is very much innovative, looking forward, trying to bring groups of people together to get insight from it. So again, it was missing from the profile. So that's one example. Next one is about a sponsors group. So this was uh, for a dinner, actually, for the sponsors group within a bank in London, slightly different. But there you can see out of all the profiles, there was three of the profiles above the line, i.e. were non-assertive, but there was 13 below the line. So it was a very dynamic, quick thinking, acting bank, but they, had, they needed to improve uh, on their portfolio management. So there was lots of projects, lots of energy around, but there was very little overall control that someone like a yellow, sorry, like a blue or a green in particular would have put those press processes and structures in place. So they'd brought in a transformation director to try and get that control of um, the projects that were happening. Next example is making a change in the way of working. This was a, an organization I was working with and it was this was the working group and we were putting in place a project management approach for the organization. And the reason for the two green in the top left was that they had recruited two people to try and help them improve on the delivery of the project. And that's where they sat because the organization is very dynamic in the marketing world and it didn't historically have that kind of structure and process. So when they saw this, it was interesting and useful for us to reflect on the style of the project management approach they needed in an organization, but what it was they were lacking and how that had created the structure that they had. Another very big large international transport design team did a workshop for them and they had the lead British designer and a European designer, different profiles, you bring them together very strong predominance of the high green, so very much engineering, structured, evidence-based, um, and different groups in the red and the yellow and the blue, different sizes, so it, it created a certain dynamic within the team, and the leadership were broadly within the high red and the high yellow, because they were assertive, um, but there was a large percentage of the team were not. So just giving you some ideas, and this, the last case studies around Qantas surveying construction consultancy. So the high greens again, large numbers, Qantas is surveying typically known for being very evidence-based, structured, organized, methodical, but they were looking to move into different markets, work, do different type of work, and they thought they needed more of the kind of high yellow to innovate, build relationships with client, go out and actively seek it. So again, it gave them an insight when we talked about this and used this with them. So what are some of the exercises you can do? Well, this slide identifies some of the questions you may want to be asked in your team. So you could ask your team to go complete the IMA profile, of which, as I said, there is a separate video on communication that can help you with that. And then with the team completed, you can ask the team these questions. How are colors dispersed? What colors are missing? What does the team mean? need at this stage, may team members, are any of the team members feeling isolated? And how can you ensure that each team member is fully motivated? Broadly speaking, it's about understanding the diversity that you have from this perspective and thinking about how you can improve the team. So what does the ideal project team look like? Well, you may think it's uh, a mem one high blue, high green, high red, high yellow, but there are issues between interfaces, between each of them, but, and collectively, and if you've got people who are all very different in the team, it has huge benefits, but there are issues with it. But you can see some of the primary roles, so say a high green will make certain that key details are covered in the project and the project's done well. A high red will keep the focus and insist on results. So each color style has got its own benefit to the team and you need to take that into account. And one of many layers that you need to consider with the diversity across a project and how you put the team together to do that. So I hope that you have found that of interest and benefit. As I said, you can go and complete the IMA profile and use that with your team members and gain some insight into whether uh, 
that gives you uh, some benefit in improving your performance. Hope you enjoyed the video. Thank you very much.